Like this would have been really sick to do, but I am walking forward, unfortunately. That's not gonna work. It's not gonna work, it's not gonna work. Listen, you, you are wrong. Very, very wrong. Hey everyone, today I'm gonna talk about some new techniques I've learned using Stable Diffusion and After Effects. With this technique, I've gotten the best results so far. I'm gonna show you some clips as I'm speaking right now. So I'm gonna share all the things that I've learned so hopefully it can help everyone get better results. So I would just ask that you like, subscribe, comment, and share this video so the algorithm can help me out. I also wanna let you know that I have a Patreon now and you can access the clips that I'm working with in these tutorials, have early access to videos and a bunch of bonus content as well. Plus this really helps out my channel. Thank you so much. So I'm gonna break Break down basically what I did for this video. Like I said, this has been the smoothest results I've gotten so far. In my previous video, I talked about how I didn't think having footage where you're changing your distance from the person would work. But I learned that in Mocha, you can actually track the position, rotation, and scale. Basically, I can make sure that even though I'm moving away from the subject, I can have the same size head so that when I put it into stable diffusion, I can get some better results. If, if you don't know what I'm talking about, you can watch my previous video where I talk about face tracking and the reason why it gives you better results. In the past, if I wanted consistent results, I had to stay as close to the actual footage as possible. I couldn't add like a heavy style because they, I need something to go off of. Like cartoon characters or anime characters, they typically have way bigger eyes than real people. So I thought, what if I add like an anime face to the person and then run that through Stable Diffusion and let the AI blend everything together? And I'm gonna show you a little bit of how I did that. Hey everyone, in this section, I'm gonna be talking about face replacement and I'm gonna show you two ways to accomplish this. One way is gonna be using the plugin that you pay for and the other way will be a free method. The paid plugin is from Motion Bros, it's called face tools and it's a little bit easier to use, a little bit faster. So if you don't wanna pay for the plugin, then you can go straight to the next part where I'm gonna talk about the free method. And I just wanna say Motion Bro is not sponsoring this video. I wish, hey, Motion Bros, hit me up. So the first thing you gotta do is you have to get the Eclipse tool, put a circle around the person's head and go into tracking. Make sure you go into face tracking, detailed features, click on that and then press the play button. As you can see, it automatically detects where the eyes and the eyebrows, the nose and the mouth is. And this will allow us to get to a point where we can add another face on top of this face. All right, so it tracked the face very well. I'm just gonna go ahead and go into mass path and then just put it to none for now so that I can see the whole screen. So now that that's done, you make sure you click on your mask, go to the spot where the person's face is as up front as possible. And that will be the rest position. In this case, somewhere around here, and then click on set rest pose. And then after you press that, you press extract and copy face measurements. As soon as that's done, you're gonna go into motion bro, go into face replacement, and then click on replacement comp. When you do that, there's gonna be another layer here that says replacement comp. You double click on that replacement comp and then you go to replacement comp holder right here. And you're gonna see this face and you're gonna bring in an image that you wanna put on top for this person. I want an image of Gwen Stacy and then you're gonna make it fit as much as possible within that face right there. Just know that this is not really meant for this kind of thing. So obviously the proportions are way, way different than a human so just find a place where, you know, it looks good once you come back over here. I might need to adjust it in a bit, but for now, let's leave it like this. Let's go back. So as soon as that's done, you get the lips tool and you put a circle around the image face like this. And you go to tracking and go two frames forward. And when you do that, you're gonna see all these numbers. Since it's far away here, everything's kind of more blurry and pixelated. So I moved to a place where I can see the numbers better. So you gotta click on the puppet position pin tool and then you're gonna click on each one of these in the same order that these numbers are at. So if I come here, I go over here, I click on one and then two, three, four. After this, you can actually remove the reference points layer and you come into the replacement comp and you can remove face track points. And then after that, you go into Motion Bros, go into the face replacement again, and then 
click on rig. So now that you clicked on rig, it should start to follow the way the face is moving. I know it looks ugly, it looks ugly, please don't doubt just yet, ye of little faith. It should start to follow the face where the face is positioned. Now go to the replacement comp and go into the mask and go back, put it back to add so that you can only see this part of the mask. Then you can feather it so that you can have some smoothness. And already, you can already see that it's feathering pretty good. You can bring down the mask expansion a little bit tighter so that you can kind of see it blending with the face a little better. You can also add a curves and tint effect to it so that you can have it blend with the skin a little better. So yeah, just blend it as much as you can. And if you need to adjust the face, you can come back here to the replacement comp holder and adjust it as needed. I tried to get it to close to as face as possible. You can remove this to see where the face is at. It's way off. I'll adjust it. That's getting closer. It's not gonna be perfect because we're talking about a cartoon character and a real person. So you just try to get it as close as you can or at least, or get it to a place where it looks good. Like right there, it doesn't look bad, right? And then right now you must be thinking like, ah, oh, I see what you're doing. I see what you did. The purpose of this is that now when you run the AI, it's gonna see the face of Gwen. Uh, and although it looks kind of like ugly right now, it doesn't look perfect. Try to get the skin tone as close as possible. And the thing is that when you run it to Stable Diffusion, then Stable Diffusion can clean up a lot of those imperfections. What I also did so that uh, you see that like the right here, it, the face is coming a little bit over the hair. What I did in my video is I made a copy of this and I just rotoscoped the hair right here. So just rotoscope the part where it's overlapping and that way it's covering over this face too so that it doesn't do anything weird by having the face coming over the, the hair like that. It doesn't look perfect right now but then you can run this through stable diffusion. So now we're going to do the free method. It's a little bit more tedious but it's still possible to do it for free. So we're going to start off like we did with the paid method. We're going to use the ellipse tool and then make a circle around the head. And then right after that, um, you can come here to mask right here and then put none so that you can see the whole frame. And then you're gonna go to tracking and go to where it says face tracking, detailed features. And then from there, you're gonna press the play button and you will start to see that it's starting to track all the face features. So let it track all the way to the end and then we'll go from there. After you've done the tracking, you want to bring in the image that's gonna replace the face. So you're gonna to wanna to line up this face with the face of the footage. And you also wanna make sure that you pick a part of the video where the person's looking directly into the camera or at least facing the camera so that their face is pretty much up front. So you can line this up as best possible. You might wanna bring down the opacity so you can see what's going on underneath and then you line it up. We're also dealing with uh, cartoon proportions here, so it's not gonna be perfect, but uh, just try to line it up as much as you can. Okay, so once you've done that, you want to make this into a pre-comp. Name it whatever you want. I'm just gonna put Gwen Base. After this, you wanna be able to use this pin tool and you're gonna pin the parts of the face uh, where the tracking was done here underneath. You want to click in a certain order each of these points because later on it's gonna help you out. But what I mean by that is, for example, you wanna start off with the outer face and this is the outer face, and then you have the eyebrows, and then you wanna do the eyes, and then the nose, and then the mouth. So if you go in that order and you make these points the way I'm showing you, it's gonna really help you out when you're trying to line up the points later. Just to make this a little bit easier, I'm gonna copy the face track points and then go to the beginning here and then paste it on the layer where um, the new face is gonna be at. Make sure that you keep track of the spot you were at and then go to the spot where you were and it should be right where it should be. And I'm just gonna start off with the chin here. I'm gonna double click the pin. You got a pin right there. Then go to face track again and then pin this. And then you're gonna follow along this path, cheek right here and the top of the cheek right here. Don't worry if it's not lining up with the actual face just yet. So we just did the chin and the cheeks. Now we're gonna do the eyebrows. Once you have that done, you can actually delete this face track effect and then that should go away. Now you have this puppet points. What you're gonna do from here is another tedious thing and that's why if you wanna pay money, you can get the plugin and it's a little bit easier. From here, you're gonna press U to, to see all the points. You can probably bring all of this up as high as possible and then you're gonna come down here 
and then go to face tracking points and you're gonna have all the facial features right here. And as you remember, we start off with the chin and cheeks. So we know that the very first point should be the chin. And if you have any doubts what pin is what, you can click on these and you'll see that um, the little uh, round yellow circles will get filled and that will show you which pin it is. So in this case, we have the chin and you're gonna come down here to the pick whip and you're gonna bring down to the chin. And then the second one, I know that it's gonna be the right middle cheek and it's the person's right, not our right, uh, because our right would be on this side, but it's this person's right. And then that's gonna be the upper right cheek. All right. I think the tedious part is done. If you follow this, this should follow the face. This should be like distorting all crazy. Um, you might think, oh, that looks horrible, but uh, we'll fix it in a bit. Double click here. So then right here, now you have to mask the face, like the eyebrows, you know, the eyes, the face, as much as you want. And then you can obviously adjust it as you go. And you want to make sure that you feather it. You go to mask and then go to feather feather it and you can always um, adjust it later and then we come back here so now you see the face has been replaced with the cartoon version of Gwen and you pretty much get very similar results as the one uh, paid plugin uh, the thing about the paid plugin is that you can do a lot more things like if they're talking it's easy to adjust so that the mouth moves along maybe I'll do a tutorial later about how to replace a face and then also have the person talk or move their mouth for now this is just for what I did for this particular video. You can put curves and tint to just have the face blend with the skin as much as possible. You can adjust it however you want and then you know make it blend with the skin as, as much as possible. If you still want to alter it slightly you can still go into the comp and move it around. I would recommend you have two screens where you can see what's going on. So what I would recommend is maybe lock this and then double click on here and then just bring this to the right of the screen and then you have the two screens at the same time. So if you make any changes here, you should see what's happening on this screen. If you slightly move, you see it now it gets a little bit more adjusted. Like you might need to adjust it however you need. So maybe you have to make it bigger and then it should follow along with that. Yeah, you see how her face is coming over the hair. So the way to fix that, you can always create a duplicate of the footage and then you can rotoscope the hair right here so that you can have this cover that face. So yeah, this will be the free method. And uh, if you don't wanna pay for the plugin, you can always do it like this. So just wanted to give you that option. So I'm gonna get this clip right here. I'm gonna find where it's at and I'm gonna make uh, like a master comp, master YouTube comp. And this will just be used simply for the tracking. And here I have all everything else, all the little layers and stuff, but I want to use this comp specifically for tracking. So let's do that. I'm going to add Mocha to it and then open. Here in Mocha, I'm going to make sure I'm in classic right here. I'm going to use the X spline tool and just mark around this person's face like this and then left click, go all the way to the beginning of this. I just click right here where it says translation, scale, and rotation. So, and then just track it. This does really well with the tracking and it will help get the results that you want. All right, as soon as that's done, you wanna make sure that you save it. You can label it whatever you want. And then you close this. You should have all the tracking data right here. So create tracking data right here. Then click on the layer you just tracked. All the data should be in here. Once you have all the tracking data, you wanna add a CC power pin to this. And then for each one of these, you want to press alt and click and you're going to have this little thing pop up in the bottom. So you grab this little pick whip right here, the top pin and you put it up where it says top left pin right here. And you basically match all of these and then you click alt left click on top right. And then you come here where's the top right pick whip on the top right. And you just keep doing this for top left, top left, and then bottom right. And that will be the last one. As Soon as that's done, you make sure that you press invert and then your footage should be stabilized. It's stabilizing right here from the first position. But if let's say I wanted to stabilize when her head is a little bit bigger and closer, 
then you can just go back into Mocha, go to the place where the face is the closest to the camera, click on here where it says planner surface and click on face. And you see this little blue box? Just adjust it however, just make some kind of adjustment and it should save that in the tracking data. So when you create new tracking data and you click on create tracking data and then you click OK, it's going to track it to that now. And now everything's a little bigger because you tracked it to that position. So now it's tracking from there. And as you can see, it's zooming in and zooming out. And this is really great for stuff that you want to do in Stable Diffusion. What I would do in this position now is I would try to make this comp an ideal position for Stable Diffusion. So I'm going to do something a little bit higher, but in Stable Diffusion, you can always do it at a smaller resolution or do whatever if you're struggling with it taking too long to process. I would get it so you can get the full face and I'm going to tell you why you would just do the face for now. This face obviously doesn't look that good right here, but look at how it makes it look after the AI has generated something, cleans it up and it just kind of fixes the imperfections that you see here. Right now I'm just using in-painting, uh, in-painting conditioning mask uh, strain. If you want to learn more about that, I do have a video I believe that it's titled um, Stable Diffusion 1.5 Settings, so you can check that out. So I ran a couple frames. This is the first frame. This is one of the frames in the middle of the video, and this is more at the end. And as you can see, the style is quite consistent, probably because of the tracking we did. When you're using in-painting checkpoint, it also tends to give a little bit more consistency with the style. Just for demonstration's sake, I'm just gonna roll with this one because it doesn't look too bad. Just to show you the settings, some people ask me about the settings. It's, it's nothing that I have not already spoken about. In this case, I didn't use the alternative test. I just ran it with in-painting, which also works for consistency. Yeah, these were my prompts, nothing too crazy. So I'm gonna go ahead and run this and then we go into After Effects. All right, so that's that's finished. So now I'm going to bring the generated sequence into here. I also reduced the amount of frames from the original so that it would generate faster and to also get a little bit less jitteriness. And as you can see, it's going to just follow what the original did, which is the tracking of the face. It turned this into this, which made it look a lot nicer in comparison. The thing that I had trouble with in the previous video is that I thought, okay, well, now I'm stuck with this footage that's stabilized. How do I go back to where it's not stabilized? So the way you get this to follow the head is that you have to do what is called reverse stabilization. So this is what I had to learn, and I'm gonna teach you how to do that. We have to make our ratio back to 1920 by 1080. Now that you have the 16 by nine, you can parent this to the original video, and then you just fit to frame. With PC, it's Control Alt F, and it should fit it to the frame, and then the AI footage should be following the original footage. The only problem is that everything's shifting around because it's stabilized still. So the next step you have to take is go ahead and make a copy of this, the original video. Click on the AI sequence along with the duplicate video and then pre-comp that and then call it whatever you want, uh, destabilized. Then uh, you come in here, you can actually uh, just um, uncheck this. You, you don't really need that, you just need this right here, goes back to the original comp, the master comp. And then from here, this is where the magic happens. You click on the original video where you have all the information that's for the stabilization. And then you click on Mocha and power pin, cut it, control X, and then you paste it to the destabilization comp. And then it's gonna look like this, but then make sure you press unstretch right here. And then there it is. It's back into place, destabilized, and it's gonna follow the original footage with all the shifting that was happening before. And then you got this. Pretty cool, right? So I want to interpolate these frames right here. So then you get the smoothness between the frames and then you're following the face as much as possible. So after that's done, you wanna mask the face. So you can go back to here and uh, actually just mask out what you need. You can use the ellipse tool or just kind of mask out the outside of this. I'm just going to use the lip tool for the sake of time. Go into mask, feather it so you can have it blend well with the rest of the things. And then you come back here and then you got this. Funny enough, this actually looks a lot smoother than my actual video does. <laughs> Look at the face. The face looks so much smoother than my first video that I did. So yeah, that's how you get um, something like this. So I'm going into the project that I worked on. 
I'm gonna show you just kind of really in summary what I did to get all these other effects like in the background and also what I did with the body and everything else. So when I take away the face layer, you can see the AI that I generated for the body and the rest of the background. I wasn't trying to get amazing results for the face in this part because I already have the face that I wanted right here. I was just trying to generate mainly the body and the background. I just blended it together with the head that I did separately. I ran the whole background just the same way I did with the head. Did a bunch of other little uh, details, but I mean, that's just more stylizing. That's something separate that I won't really talk about. I just wanted to show you how I got the smooth results that I did and basically how I accomplished this look i made a video about how to use the ev synth so you can look that up if you like when i ran it through ev synth uh this is the results that i got which was a lot less jitteriness in the face and uh, these all blended together these are all keyframes that i used so that's how i did this video hopefully this was very helpful for you guys but yeah i, I just want to thank everybody for watching please like subscribe i plan to in the future maybe creating some type of patreon or something where i can put like the footage that I'm working on there for people who, who are part of the Patreon and um, maybe even like uh, early videos and stuff of my tutorials or just kind of fun stuff. I will definitely look into that because I would love to make this my full-time job. I love just creating video content and doing effects and stuff. I appreciate you guys watching, supporting, liking, sharing with everybody. I am so grateful for that. Definitely share with me like some stuff that you create. People tag me uh, on the stuff they make and I'm really impressed with some of the stuff that people have made. Thank you so much. And like always, take care. God bless and peace.